Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Hey, how's it going? Very well, thank you. Very well. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, and uh, happy kind of late morning to you over there. Indeed, indeed. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, right. It started off as a cold, wet uh, morning here in London, but actually we can't complain mm -hmm. because it's been uh, lovely weather for the last few weeks. Oh, okay. I see. Well, that's pretty. That's pretty rare. I hear. <laughs> so, good you got that. Uh, that that's a uh, pretty good weather. Indeed, indeed. Alrighty. Well, I think we're set to kick things off. What do you say? Uh, yeah. Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Cool. Well, of course, I want to say hi to everybody who's listening, and a happy Tuesday to everybody. It's so great to see our listeners joining in our space today. And if you're new to Miria, we are an end-to-end -end gaming ecosystem and Ethereum layer 2. And that means our job is to make it a breeze to build a mint on our platform and allow players and builders to explore games and dApps while enjoying gas-free carbon neutral transactions at speed. So our community has grown to over half a million globally and our network is currently supporting 13 million verified wallets and upwards of 270 game studios. And while that was a mouthful, of course, we're here to talk about metaverses, blockchain, gaming, and everything in between. And so joining us today is GoNifty CEO Yasin. GoNifty has got some insanely cool things in the make, including its own metaverse engine that's designed to empower anyone to create metaverses and blockchain-based games. Yasin, it's such a pleasure to have you over and talk about the project. No, the pleasure's all mine. Thank you very much for that very generous introduction. Yeah, great. And so to kick things off, you know, I'd love for our community to get to know you better. Could you tell us a bit about your professional background and what brought you to the wonderful world of Web3? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I must say it makes me feel like a bit of a dinosaur. So um, <laughs> I actually, I actually, my professional background was in financial services. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm based in London. Uh, I worked in the financial services industry um, for over a decade. So I started out um, in State Street Global Market. So that was my first gig. Uh, worked there for a bit. Moved into wealth management. So I was a small UK wealth manager. Uh, and then after that, moved to some of the more international firms. So um, moved to JP Morgan Asset Management. Worked there for some time. And then finally ended up at Goldman Sachs um, and was there for about seven years uh, as an executive director. Um, but really from as early as 2014, I would say, is when I started to um, notice and pay attention to blockchain and cryptocurrency. And back then, you know, truth be told, the focus, my focus was very much on, you know, the revolutionary kind of power of uh, Bitcoin specifically, and then also uh, Ethereum and Ripple uh, XRP at the time. So, um, yeah, I was sort of following the space, was intrigued. I was more interested in, you know, the potential of these technologies. Um, and, you know, I, almost as a side of desk hobby was um, actively learning about this, talking to some of my colleagues. I remember they all thought I was crazy. They said, stay away from that. <laughs> and then fast, fast, fast forward, the fast forward, they're all contacting me now asking, how do I get involved in Web3? Uh, so the tables surely have turned. Um, but yeah, so from, from 2014 onwards, sort of very much went down the rabbit hole, started learning deeply about the space. And then separately, one of my um, sort of side passions is, is gaming. And um, really uh, the convergence of, I suppose, this revolutionary technology um, of blockchain and the whole spirit of decentralization and then you're thinking about the use cases um and gaming was was an obvious one uh, so really from 2021 is when i decided to move into the space full-time and uh, started focusing on our project go nifty cool and well you know um truth be told you don't sound too old and <laughs> i wouldn't have guessed that you've had such a rich corporate background and it's, it's pretty cool to see um, people with a wealth of knowledge in that former space kind of come into a relatively new space like the crypto world. Yeah, no, thanks, thanks. And, and you know, the, the, I think, you know, the reality is the tables are turning. Um, I think if you look at a lot of innovation, um, the early stage, the early doctors tend to be people on the edge. Um, and then as once it becomes a bit more established and, you know, you kind of iron out the wrinkles, um, the floodgates open and then everyone else joins. And um, in a lot of corporate uh, organizations, you know, there is this um, this need to kind of, you know, uh, respect the status quo, you know, go along, you know, it's, it's, it's an established organization, it's got years and years, it's very conservative, and that's totally, 
kind of acceptable and understandable. But there is this sort of spirit of entrepreneurship, innovation, striving to kind of change and be different. So you do tend to have sort of very interesting people in some of these big uh, corporations that are very much uh, on the front foot looking at these technologies, but they very much are in the minority. Um, and uh, if you look at the classic case of, um, you know, what's happened over the last five years or so, uh, you've seen interest, institutional interest in the space has just grown like quite a lot. And unfortunately, with the whole FTX saga last year, um, yeah. it, put, it put a lot of people off. But I think there is the people that can you know, cancel out the noise and just focus on the the heart of the issue, understand that actually this is something that is a, a kind of once in a generation revolutionary kind of transformative technology that can really change the world. Yeah, absolutely. That The FDX thing, that was quite the contagion, wasn't it? And I think one of the, the main uh, differences is that, that uh, Web3 is kind of more transparent in that way. And so, it, of course, it's kind of more visible when things like that happen. But anyway, yeah, going back yeah. to the project, and I, I really want to like um, super interested and excited to talk about it. And for everyone out there who's hearing about Go Nifty for the very first time, could you maybe give us a short and sweet overview of the project and what it's all about? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So essentially, it's uh, in, in a nutshell, it's it's a Web three sort of gaming platform that is essentially creating tools to enable people to create their own. Uh, experiences, uh, whether they're experiences in the metaverse or their own games. Um, but of course, it also has its own, uh, sort of arcade, so to speak. So maybe if I take a, if I take a step back just to help contextualize this, mm -hmm. you know, the way, the way in which this, um, project was conceived and, you know, really what we're trying to arrive at is if you take it back to the basics, we very much have a thesis that the, the metaverse is the next incarnation of the internet. And if you look at, you know, web two, there are a lot of brands, organizations, businesses, individuals that wanted to have an online presence. They'll create their own blogs, they create their own websites, they have their own storefronts. Um, and actually, if you look at the metaverse, for, for us, that is the next incarnation of the internet, which is essentially an immersive web where you can actually experience it in real time. And, you know, not to get too sci-fi about this, mm -hmm. I've fundamentally believe the future is you know we're, we're moving into this into this direction and the future is very much going to be uh where practically every business every individual will have a digital twin or a you know a representation in a virtual world and we call it metaverse there are lots of different ways in which people describe it and you know if you kind of take a step back and look at that landscape and you look at the industry or a use case that's most ripe for that it's obviously gaming, right? If you look at a lot of gaming today, you have VR games, you have very immersive games. People like to spend time in games. They have their own, um, you know, uh, kind of social lives in games, so to speak. And uh, so, so we're going to have this situation in the future where people want to spend more time online. They're going to have these more immersive games. Uh, coupled with blockchain technology where people can then actually own their assets, um, the next step is how do you actually give people the tools to create their own experiences within these metaverses? How people that may want to create their own game or may want to create their own, you know, gallery or room or something and they want to personalize it. At the moment, you don't really have that. And coming back to my uh, analogy before about Web2 versus Web3, if you look at Web2, you've got, you know, tools and platforms like, um, you know, Squarespace and WordPress, which really enabled people to create their own websites in a very easy way. It democratized access to people having their own online presence. Um, the same isn't true for Web3 or, or Metaverse yet in an established way. I mean, there are a few people trying to do this, but I think the future is very much moving in that direction. So the gap we saw and what we are trying to address really is by having this one-stop shop platform where we essentially are gaming you know, we're going to have our own hub of games. People can come and play those games. But on top of that, we want to give people the ability to then create their own personal experiences um, by it, it within games or within the metaverse. Um, and that's where we'll be providing this tooling. But look, we mustn't get ahead of ourselves. And I think the first step really is entertainment value, right? Um, well, partly the problem we have with Web3 gaming, unfortunately, I believe, is the fact that the focus is in the wrong place. It's very much on the blockchain and, and sort of, um, you know, the, the sort of speculative investment side of tokens rather than the gameplay itself, the entertainment value. 
And, you know, Web2 gaming, traditional gaming, isn't a multi-billion dollar industry, you know, for no reason. It's, it's that because it's got really amazing games that people want to spend their time playing and they want to have fun playing those games. So for us in Web3, the, the, the key really is to ensure we create cool games, really cool games. You know, it's, it's a game first. People will come and play those games. And then there are the added benefits of, you know, being able to own your own assets. And then on top of that, there is the additional icing on the cake, which is giving people the tools to then personalize their experience within these virtual worlds and these games. Yeah, absolutely. And like um, a lot of people who are building in the space right now are, especially in gaming, are very much of the idea that they should be games first and something that people actually genuinely enjoy playing and then get invested and sort of buy into that ownership aspect of things. And I think you hit it on the head, absolutely. And um, what's uh, where does uh, Go Nifty step in? You guys are doing something pretty exciting as well in this particular sector. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and maybe if, if I um, you know, just talk a bit about the, the sort of inspiration behind this project, because I think that really, for me anyway, um, hits uh, the nail on the head, right? And it kind of drives to the heart of the issue and what we're building and, and why we're building it. So, you know, if we if we rewind back to COVID and there was this global pandemic, um, you know, more or less every person um, experienced this in a very, very direct way, in one way or another. And for a lot of us, um, you know, we were obviously having to isolate at home. We, there was lockdowns across the globe. Schools were closed. And interestingly, my my daughter uh, was actually doing uh, online learning at the time because her school was closed. And yeah. I found it really remarkable that, um, they, you know, school, part of going to school is there is a big social element, right? You see your friends, you play with them, you go into your classroom, you learn, and it's a very social experience. And for a lot of these young kids, you know, they never experienced, practically none of us have experienced anything like this. But mm -hmm. now, all of a sudden, they're, they find themselves at home without their friends, isolating, and um, they have these online classes and there isn't that social interaction. And uh, my daughter actually started um, playing Roblox. And it was so funny yeah. because pretty much all of her school uh, friends, uh, the, the girls in her class, were actually also on Roblox. And they were essentially hanging out there and socializing there and catching up. And, you know, that replaced the, the sort of in, in real life interaction. And um, she really got immersed in the game. And as you know, it's, it's a pretty cool game. Um, mm -hmm. But what was interesting was, uh, so I suppose for me, it was a bit of an eye opener, was just how much, how easy it was to, to spend money in those games. So she'd constantly ask me, Daddy, can you buy me this? Can you buy me that? And um, it was interesting because we, over the lockdown period, spent too much money, if I could say, <laughs> on, on these in-game assets. And I remember thinking to myself, this is a con. I mean, sure, like you're, you're throwing your time into this game, you're throwing your money into this game, and you don't actually get anything back aside from entertainment value, right? And yeah. the, the kind of the, the light bulb moment hit where I thought, imagine you had a Roblox-style sort of ecosystem of games where people can actually own their assets. So, okay, they're investing money in some of these in-game assets, but actually it's theirs to keep. And they can trade it, they can sell it, they can keep it. And wouldn't that, that be so much cooler, right? And especially, especially considering, um, you know, children obviously have their interests and then they kind of get bored and they forget about it and they revisit. And um, the amount of times uh, she got locked out of her account and we had to create a new account and you pretty much lose everything, um, you know, it was, it's just, it's painful. <laughs> it's painful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, considering the amount, of, the amount of money you spent, spent on that. Uh, and then the second thing, which was really an eye opener for me was um, that apparently there are these people you can actually buy some of these assets from online, but it's very cloak and dagger, secretive. You buy it on eBay, they send you the code and it's all, you feel like you're doing something illegal, right? <laughs> and I thought to myself, it shouldn't be like this. It shouldn't be like this. It should be an open, fair, transparent, you know, markets economy where you go in, you play your game, if you buy assets, it should be an open marketplace, you get to keep them, you can then sell them as you please to others. Um, and that was really the, the birth of Go Nifty. Um, the idea to have this convergence of gaming with Web3 technology, blockchain, where essentially, uh, you know, ultimately you're giving the players real power. You're giving them the ability to own their assets. You're giving them the ability to monetize their own time. So if they're spending a lot of time in a game and they're, you know, reaching certain levels and they're unlocking certain um, in-game assets, they should reap the rewards of their own 
you know, hard work and they should then be able to capitalize on that. And they should then be able to, you know, create some sort of, uh, you know, financial gain from that. Um, so yeah, that, that was the, the inspiration behind, uh, our project. And, um, you know, our, our mission is very much monetizing the metaverse for the many. So mm-hmm. h- how do we give the tools to people? Well, Hey, how do we, we, we create cool games for people to come. And then when they come, give them the tools to then say, hey, you can personalize your own space in the metaverse. You can create your own mini game. You can create your own experience in the metaverse. That's very much the, uh, the, the, the vision and the mission. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, like, especially considering that a lot of the critiques for Web3 nowadays kind of boils down to, yes, you do have ownership over your assets, but the production of those assets are still centralized or the games are still mm. centralized in some capacity. And so that ad- the added bonus of being able to create your own experience and co-create the world within is just just yeah. like another layer on top of that. So I'm glad you really touched on that as well. Uh, what sort of games uh, that you mentioned can we find on Goo Nifty? Yeah, no, so we've, we've got a selection uh, we've been busy working on. So a, a lot of people talk about how the bear market has been really bad. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure it's been horrific for a lot of people. <laughs> but actually, actually, it's, it's, been a, it's been a good time just to kind of put your head down and focus on building without the distraction of the, <laughs> the, the kind of um, the, the volatility of the market, right? And um, so for us, we've been focused on building out the games because we believe, you know, we, as I said before, like we, we want to create cool games that people actually come and play. And then everything else is, is a kind of benefit, right? It's a, it's a bonus on top of that. Um, so we, we actually have been working on a few mobile games. So we have a, a game called Cyber Samurai Pixel Hero, which is a, a 2D style kind of, um, a game kind of sort of like Super Mario Shinobi style. Uh, really, really cool, that. kind of Love casual, quite addictive. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> and it's quite addictive. Um, and that's the other thing as well. People don't realize the, the mobile gaming market is huge, huge. Most people in the world own a mobile device. Not everyone owns a laptop or a PC. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, you need to be, uh, you know, the way I always like to, to frame this is, you know, our job is to be agnostic and to basically provide cool games that anyone anywhere can play and therefore you need to make it accessible to them and there are different platforms in which you do that so we wanted to have a mix between mobile versus pc versus online um so yeah so that's that's the mobile game we've got we've been spending a lot of time on that um that should be coming out in the coming weeks which we're very very excited about um there's also another game neon night fighters which is a fighter game again a mobile game um the third game is war for palace which is a shooter game uh, really cool we actually did a which we're actually going to be releasing very soon. We did a, a story style game, you know, these sort of quest games, like a visual novel, which really sets the scene for the um, overall kind of game, I would say, the lore. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's sort of this dystopian cyberpunk future world. Uh, really, really cool, but I won't give too much details. We're going to be dropping that. It's called Chronicles of Palace. It's a very sort of easy, accessible um visual novel style uh, quest game that really just sets the scene and lore and then the other games kind of then expand on that and go in different directions um and then finally our own metaverse i mean that's something we've been spending a lot of time on and we just keep trying to make it better uh but we're hoping to release a demo in, in again in the next sort of uh three three months or so um but yeah it's been an exciting time for us we're very excited you know you spend a lot of time behind the scenes just doing the work and uh you know you see it so much and you kind of then realize actually it's important we get it out there and let people just enjoy this um so yeah we're looking forward to that cool yeah and i'm I'm glad that you guys are really dabbling into the mobile format especially since you're kind of going into that route of oh you know in order to for people to live in our metaverse we kind of have to live in their pockets first so that was really um you know a, a pretty portable solution to that really cool stuff um i know that there's a uh, drop coming out soon. It's the Avatar NFT drop, which I'm sure a lot of people are getting excited about. Could you tell us more about that and how to participate? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so this is another thing that we're super excited about. So this is the the um, Genesis uh, Avatar, Go Nifty Avatar. So as I mentioned, we have our own metaverse. Um, and if you just visualize this uh, in your minds for a moment, so you can, once it's live, you'll see this, but you go into our metaverse. Um, you can then hang out. This is a simulation type game. You then go to the game arena within the game arena. You then have essentially an arcade of games 
And you can then see Cyber Samurai, Pixel Hero, you can see Neon Night Fighters, Walk for Place. You can then go into the game, it takes you into like, it's a portal that takes you into the game, you can play the game and then come back out into the metaverse, Go Nifty World. Now, when you're in Go Nifty World, if you are a holder of our Go Nifty avatars, the Genesis avatars, these are essentially the first, these are almost like the founding fathers of our metaverse. So this will afford you uh, certain rights, privileges within our ecosystem, discounts, rewards, um, obviously, uh, let's say in the, in the governance as well, once we launch our token, uh, people will receive an airdrop of the token as well. Um, so there are, there are a plethora of benefits that come with holding this NFT, but fundamentally, this will be a, a playable avatar right so when we do our nft drop we'll have the, the png file you know the, the jpeg but it'll also uh the the users will receive an fbx file so an actual 3d uh, avatar which will then be playable within our within our metaverse um so yeah they're really they're really cool again it plays on the theme i mentioned before the cyberpunk sort of style um you will see when we release it the quality is amazing i mean it's a sort of very hyper realistic uh, avatars and um yeah we're, we're really excited we're uh, uh you know in terms of when the mint date will be so we're looking to launch it drop it next week thursday um you will be able to access it from our website we'll have the details there soon and obviously we'll be doing uh you know special uh, a special allocation for the mirror community as well so um no we're super excited about this it gives people um a foot a footing in, in our metaverse and it then opens uh, a world of possibilities you know as we start to build out this um, gaming ecosystem yeah definitely I'm, I'm sure oh you know once we really get word out in our community that it's also dropping on our marketplace people are probably going to rate it and then fight each other for it and then spill over to your your <laughs> gang rate your place for it and you know so they can play it um over there too and it, I, I really like the arcade style of things too it's kind of like oh it's uh it, it, it it's it's pretty unique it's 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 almost like you're in a dream and then you, that dream has an arcade that arcade has yeah. games and some games exactly. even go far, some games even go as far as you know, hosting a little mini arcade in that game, and that game has like a little mini game in that within the game. So it's a pretty crazy Inception thing going on. <laughs> nah, I agree. I agree. No, it's. I think it's. You know, uh, the, the the kind of you know people like analogies because it helps people to understand. And in the early days, the way we used to describe this to a lot of people was. You know the the game bench, which is the the gaming library with all the games I mentioned, the arcade. Yeah. Uh, that's like the Netflix for for Web three gaming, right? Because people would understand yeah. Netflix. Yeah. You go there, you can see a variety of different um, you know shows, movies, and so on. And the 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 tooling side of things, enabling people to actually create their own experience, is like the WordPress for Web three gaming, right? Where we're giving people tools to create what their own. Uh, games but um but no i think you know in in real life in the old days at least you, you, your free time the weekends you know you go out with your friends you, you may go down to the arcades and play games or you know whatever it might be and as i mentioned the metaverse is the next um we, we believe anyway the next incarnation of the in and then a lot of that started moving online the metaverse mm -hmm. is the next incarnation of the internet and actually people will start to have digital replicas of their worlds in the in the in the metaverse and um i think that's you know something quite powerful about having that freedom to you know socialize with your friends in a virtual world where you're not <laughs> defined by the laws of gravity you can do anything um and then you then go into this arcade and you can you know have a taste of nostalgia have these sort of arcades uh, sort of platform style games or some of these futuristic games intergalactic games you know what you know, whatever you can imagine is possible. Uh, people can then unleash their creativity and create these amazing experiences. And with these tools, you can just create this very beautiful mosaic of exciting Web3 games that people are actually enjoying, but also benefiting from, like, economically. Yeah, and I, I totally, I totally agree. And um, it's kind of like when you said, oh, it's it's like the WordPress, um, it, but in a kind of Web3 analog. And that's if WordPress makes high quality movies like Netflix. It, it, it enables you to pump out the same level of quality. And a lot of people out there have really great ideas. And for you guys to be able to give them this tool and kind of canvas for them to paint them on into something that they can walk around in is pretty remarkable, I think. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, you guys are pretty much uh, transcending both 
time and uh, physical world diseases uh, <laughs> to be able to socialize <laughs> with each other. That's absolutely great. Um, on kind of like a more broad stroke like way of thinking, how do you think NFTs and Web3 tech will be change the gaming industry? Yeah, I think it's going to, you know, we need to be honest about this, right? Unfortunately, today in Web2 uh, gaming, I say Web2, traditional gaming, there mm -hmm. is a stigma attached to Web3 and crypto and blockchain just because, unfortunately, the space is plagued with scams. And yeah. we need to be mindful of the fact that, and, and we need to appreciate and recognize that there is very, this is real, like people do have this perception. And us, you know, those of us on the inside who actually see this and see the the transformative power of this technology we see past all this noise and all this, you know, stuff that happens on the side. And we say, look, just ignore that and focus on the heart of the issue and how this can actually really take the, the, the gaming industry to a whole new level. Um, but it's an uphill struggle. And I think we just need to continue highlighting the benefits of Web3 um, within the Web2 gaming communities. And I think the way in which we do that, and again, we need to be realistic about this. It's not so much about banging on on the, the technicalities of blockchain, or the, the potential of some of these speculative investments to moon, that's not how you're going to get Web3, uh, sorry, Web2 gamers into the space. Mm -hmm. How you're going to do it is by basically playing their own game, which is having really good games, first and foremost, that is indistinguishable from other Web2 games. And then on top of that, you unlock this world of flexibility and opportunity by inserting Web3 technologies that allow people to own their own assets, have true ownership of their own assets. So most gamers you talk to, you know, they, they kind of forget that actually, aside from the entertainment value they get from the game, they don't actually get much. It's just a very much a one-sided relationship where they're pouring their time and effort into something and their capital, yeah. their money, and in return, they get some entertainment. And I think over time, when people can actually see that, hey, you've got this really cool game that I just enjoy playing, and the added benefit is I can get paid to play it, right? I can actually make a decent living out of this. Then I think that's when we're going to really change the narrative. And I think this stigma will disappear or at least start to diminish. And over time, you know, there'll be less scams in the space. I think there may be more regulation coming. Uh, I think there'll be more mature projects that are fully established. Um, and I think naturally things will start to move in the right direction, which is people recognizing that Web3 is really going to take gaming to a whole new level. And look, the, the one thing I would say is if it wasn't truly transformative and it didn't have a lot of potential, uh, they, these big uh, gaming giants wouldn't be taking this seriously in terms of like behind the scenes investigating how they can actually utilize this. Um, and uh, I would say, really, we need to remember that games need to be fun. So we need to focus on really cool, uh, really good quality for the games. And then to um, allow people to then have a essentially a two-way relationship with games right so they can play the game they can put their effort into it but they're also able to extract from the game in terms of economic uh, incentives and being able to monetize their own time and you know there is also a kind of uh, social as uh, i say social there's a kind of humanitarian social aspect to this where mm -hmm. if you look at the world today um and I, I hate to divide the world up into categories but conventionally people talk about the you know the the developing world and the developed world and if you look at you know gdp and people's earning potential and you look at jobs and pay uh, the bottom line is we're all humans we all have families all we need to support and we all need to live and depending on where you are in the world you can have uh, more income and or, or less income and actually one of the one of the real remarkable things about blockchain and web3 is the the kind of the power it has to democratize financial independence meaning no matter where you are in the world you can play a game and you can have a good time playing the game mm -hmm. and you can actually earn some income playing that game and that income will not be commensurate with the kind of local living wage wherever you are it will be kind of almost like a global standard so you could be in some parts of the developing world and earn money playing these really cool games. That would be more money than some of these really high paid jobs in your own local country, right? But actually in the developed world, it may be sort of fairly uh, kind of average. So there is this democratizing power to Web3 and, and blockchain, uh, generally speaking. And I think, you know, we're all humans, we'll have a love for, uh, you know, um, entertainment and so on. And 
I think there's something quite powerful from a societal point of view where you can actually push out, pump out really cool games, people to enjoy themselves, have a good time, but actually be able to have you know some economic gain from it and support their families and live their best life. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of just to add on top of games having to be fun and valuable experiences, I think a lot of uh, what the Web3 studios are doing nowadays also is kind of making it very stealthy and subtle, the Web3 aspect of things. We have projects over on our side who are making people, like allowing people to play these games first without having to do anything or set up a wallet and then afterwards offer up the wallet option as kind of like a an extended benefit and an added layer of, hey, you can actually own these assets and do whatever you want with them and trade them and sell them or keep them or burn them. And and it's, um, like you said, it's a pretty liberating thing to, to do. And I think there's a lot of responsibility also for studios and experienced creators to just lower and make that learning co- curve a little bit flatter to kind of welcome everybody yeah. in and Absolutely. get a better Absolutely. understanding of it. <laughs> yeah. I think a lot of people yeah. are very scared of zero X wallets because of how they look. Like they look like they look like the this is it. Yeah. <laughs> No, no, I, I, you know, you touch on a very important issue, right? And and just to add, that's exactly the approach we're taking with the mobile games, right? We want to launch these games first and then slowly start to add these, um, the, the kind of blockchain integrated aspects to it. Um, but you, you touch on a really important point there. And, and I think this is a, another, you know, issue we have in the industry today, right? And I think maybe some solutions we, we can t- discuss them. But part of the issue is, you know, if I were to summarize it into two kind of things, uh, and I'm talking specifically about gaming um, or Web3 gaming. One we've already talked about at length is quality. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, if you look at the quality of games in Web3, the blockchain, so-called blockchain games, with all due respect, the, the quality is substandard. And um, the, the kind of focus is very much on the speculative investment side of things, you know, earning tokens and just, you know, trying to make money off that without having actually core cool gameplay. And then you, 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 you compare that with Web2 games, the focus is very much on really cool graphics, you know, immersive gameplay, uh, a really good, um, you know, game mechanics, uh, great experience all round. And that's why people are drawn to those games and they like to play it. And we really need to bridge that gap by focusing, again, as I said before, on the quality, making sure we have really cool games that are games first. And then the blockchain aspects, the Web3 aspects as a secondary uh, supplementing factor uh, as opposed to the primary uh, factor right so so one is the whole quality aspect but the second which is the point you just touched on the xerox um, wallets is accessibility right so accessibility comes in two ways one how like how do you actually access games in terms of from a platform point of view whether it's your mobile device whether it's pc we've already touched on that depending on where you are in the world um you know you may have a particular preference or you may play games via a certain um device or, or medium um but actually now coming to web3 the thing that scares people so much is the, compl- it, the, the how it appears complicated at fa- on the face of it. So mm. for us crypto natives or people who are in the space, you know, we understand MetaMask, we know how to use wallets, we, we understand, you know, private keys and, all, and so on and so forth, right? But for a lot of people who have no idea about Web3 or blockchain and they're gamers, they want to play games, the moment you ask them, okay, now you need to have your your non custodial wallet, and you have make sure you save your keys. And it's this long string, and if you lose it, you're going to lose all your assets forever. And to convert, you know, to send assets into it, you need to go to this decentralized exchange and purchase some Ethereum, and then send it over. How do I purchase Ethereum? Okay, you need to go somewhere where they have fiat on ramps. Uh, it just it's way too complicated, right? There's a lot of friction there, and the key is to make it frictionless. And how you do that is again focus on the game and have these things as secondary things that come later in, in a in, in a very subtle way um but yeah I, I'm, I'm with you i think you know if we want to bring the next billion users into uh blockchain web 3 via gaming we need to talk their language and we need to make it accessible and we need to make it as frictionless as possible yeah yeah absolutely uh, i mean I, I think like not everybody is a macgyver by, by nature not not everyone is curious as to what code is that and how does that code run and i know that statistically developers and interest in coding is going up but then at the same time uh you know the the inherent interest in gaming and what whether or not it 
in the long term sparks joy in your heart as a, as a player um, matters a lot. And so in that way, Web 2 and traditional gaming as well as Web 3 gaming aren't really mutually ex exclusive, given, given that they both have really useful things that when put together can make something pretty, pretty grand. Absolutely, absolutely. And one thing I would add, just on the on the technical side of things, you know, it's it's really it's really really important, you know, the role you guys play, Miria, as a layer two, because if you look at so for us in this space, we understand, we know the issues, the challenges. Uh, most of the space is built on on Ethereum. Obviously, the gas prices are just extortionate, or they can be when there's a lot of activity. It's not scalable. There's all these issues, right, which is essentially going to slow down the adoption i think in the space uh we've seen it before uh unfortunately it's just not ready that the technology the blockchain the ethereum blockchain as it is is not ready to onboard a billion kind of gamers into the space without layer two solutions such as mirror and i think the role you guys play is 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 instrumental it's really really important you're an important you know cog in this machine because uh what essentially you're doing is enabling the space to become truly scalable and on board like the next billion users into the space and for us to genuinely uh be able to then uh, you know take web 2 gaming to another level right mm -hmm. without so part of the issue is there's a lot of people in web 2 gaming where are they going to go you know w without layer 2 solutions uh, the, the technology just wouldn't be able to accommodate them yeah yeah it would absolutely. just be prohibit it'll be prohibitive it'll be it'll be prohibitively expensive and it just defeats the whole point <laughs> of <laughs> you know the promise that we're making in terms of the power of decentralization and being able to own your own assets and trade a lot of in-game assets are essentially micro transactions uh it, it would be redundant if you're having to pay multiples of that in gas fees uh, it just doesn't make any sense and that's where the solution you guys play is is, is truly truly important Oh, well, thanks. Thanks so much for that. We really appreciate that, Yasin. And <coughs> coming from a blockchain extraordinaire such as yourself, um, uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks for the compliment. And I think a, a lot of the, the concept behind Mirio was really just us looking at gas fees and going like, wait a minute, is that $300 for a single transaction? <laughs> and so, <coughs> you know, like Mirio has been partnered uh, very closely with Starkware to kind of bundle these transactions up together it's kind of like if you were to take the bus instead of taking a car and then you'd, you'd have less traffic um that way by mass commuting it's the same thing that we're doing with transactions only in like exclusively gaming space so yeah absolutely theorem layer two is <laughs> another great analogy that's perfect the bus versus the car <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the exactly, bus versus yeah. the that's car exactly. yeah and uh, i mean like since we're carbon neutral i think it's it, it also kind of speaks to the environmental um impact of it as well um just because you're, you're bundling transactions it takes less energy and ethereum right before it uh, moved to the proof of stake uh, ethereum was doing pretty uh they, 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 it was consuming a lot of energy. <laughs> so Horrendous. I'm glad we're in a better, yeah, exactly, yeah. monstrous amounts of energy. So I'm glad we're in a better place now. Um, and the kind of, I just kind of want to jump back into like Go Nifty and what you guys are doing. Are there any exciting things that you're looking forward to in 2023? Like um, any anything, any mil milestones that we should um, look forward to and keep 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 tabs on? Yeah, no, th thanks. I mean, it's really <laughs> everything we've been doing. I think we're excited about everything equally. Um, <laughs> but I think it starts with the the mobile games. I mean, genuinely, I think it's we're we're, we're kind of brimming with excitement because it's been a long time in the making. A lot of these games we've been creating, and we just want to push it out there so our communities can really enjoy it, and we can start to see, you know, people uh, understand that actually we can have really cool games. Um, and have Web3 that supplements that as opposed to completely takes it over. So we've got the mobile games that we'll be releasing. We're super excited about that. That'll be, you know, in the coming weeks. Um, super, super excited. The NFT drop, of course, uh, next week. That's something that, again, is very close to our hearts because these are the, the kind of the, the pioneers, the first citizens of our metaverse, so to speak, uh, the founding fathers. And uh, yeah, we're excited about that. Um, and then the the actual metaverse itself, the demo, which we'll be releasing uh, again, that's something that we're we're truly excited about because it then shows like visually what it is we're doing. Because sometimes I describe this and people are like, "Well, that sounds really cool," but 
how do you do that in practice? And you know, it's it's, it's not that difficult when you've actually got a game and you can actually see it. You go into your metaverse, you travel, you look at the map, you travel to the game arena, you enter the game arena, and then you see these different games. You enter them like, through a portal, and then you play the games and you leave and you come back out. And it's it's quite similar to real life, but again, being able to show that. Um, you know, for us is is really important, and we're really excited about that. And then finally, as a, as a sort of phase two of our project, um, you know, the sort of second half of the year, first half of next year, is where we're going to be focusing a lot on the tooling. So this is this phase has been very much on the games, so we can actually have the games and attract people. And then the next phase will be on the tooling, where people are then once they're now in our ecosystem and playing the games, we can now give them these tools to then create their own. Um, digital experiences so we're, we're super excited about that and um, you know, it'd be remiss of me not to mention AI in this conversation I think there's been a lot of hype on AI recently and we, we've been following AI for a few years now and um, you know I remember early last year we were we were kind of exploring and looking at you know um, sort of uh, procedural modeling and AI in terms of text to 3D objects as opposed to text to images um, which obviously took off uh, and I think it's really exciting if you look at um, what AI can do I don't think it will replace humans but I think it will make us more productive and it could just streamline and, and make uh, a lot of the processes we do more efficient so uh, you know I think any serious technology uh, creator kind of technology in the future will need to have some form of AI kind of imbued in it because there are a lot of tasks that are just naturally time consuming. And if you can automate that with AI, then you can focus your energy on being truly creative. Um, and that th those two coupled together, uh, you can really make magic. Well, I'm, I'm happy to, to know that the, the description of this talk was up to snuff and <laughs> step into the future with GoNFT. And I think that's exactly where you guys are headed. Um, mobile is definitely something that is exciting considering how good phones are getting nowadays and so you're kind of just jumping right into that tech pool of better mo like monstrous phones that can handle really really good games i mean that, that was the that was the blocker before with mobile that uh, you know phones can't really handle good ones but now the way that they're making them nowadays is just insane how, the quality that they can pump out so i'm glad yeah. that you guys capitalize on that <laughs> and even the people with less, and, and you're absolutely right, but also even people with the sort of um, lower quality mobile phones, um, if you look at streaming services now, I mean, it's it's a whole new world as well. So there are some cool solutions out there with regards to being able to stream content onto phones, like just how like YouTube works on practically any device, no matter where you are in the world. Um, mm -hmm. It's almost kind of like similar to that, where you could have your games running in servers and streamed into people's phones. So uh yeah, I think uh, technology is catching up, and I think the next three years is going to be truly, um, I, I think, game-changing, and excuse the pun. But I think if you look at the acceleration in technology versus blockchain versus, you know, um, just general level of awareness and understanding people, those three convergences, I think it's going to be a truly exciting future. Yeah, yeah. And decentralized compute and, and cloud computing is, is definitely a very Web3 concept. I, like, I know we probably got it before when we were doing torrents, hush hush, <laughs> to get um, to movies, contents um, from different sites. Um, but uh, that idea kind of, it, it went, it came into its own and it, it allowed for everyone to kind of contribute to allow everybody to enjoy experiences. And I think that's a big um, part of what decentralization is all about. Okay, cool. Um, so I, we've gone through a, a lot, a lot of points today. Um, now I'm, I'm curious if, if anybody who's listening now has a question for Yasin and maybe is more curious um, about GoNFT. I see somebody who's already requested to speak. Um, yeah, Yasin, if it's all the same, I'm going to bump this person up yeah, sure. and um, maybe he has a question for us. Uh, so I'm seeing Fault Sushi Swap has requested actually since a while ago. I'm going to bump you up and uh, let us know if you have a question. And uh, we'll try to answer it as best we can. Okay, I think he left. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, well, um, if, if anybody has a question, uh, just feel free to request to be a speaker and I'll bump you up and you can ask us anything. That's why it's an AMA. Uh, in the meantime, where can they go find you um, in terms of socials, Discord, website? 
Yeah, sure. So you can join our, our Twitter. So real underscore go nifty. We also within our bio and Twitter, you'll see links to our various socials, Discord, TG. Uh, I'm also on LinkedIn if you want to find me. Um, but yeah, uh, and then of course, check out our website. We've got a lot of content on our website. You can see um, some some of the games that I mentioned on our site. We also have a YouTube channel where you can see some clips of the gameplay. So yeah, there's a lot of lot of content out there, a lot of resources for interested people to go and uh, look into. Yeah, I, I did see I did see some sneak peeks and clips. Uh, they they look absolutely amazing, by the way. Good job to the team on that as well. Thank you, thank you. Really appreciate it. Now it's it's important, right? Because uh, you know, we talk about technology. Um, it's really amazing. We got a lot of these tools, you know, Twitter and YouTube, and we can actually. It's easier to push content out nowadays. And mm -hmm. you know, in, in the old days, uh, when games wanted to come out, you had very few avenues where you can actually promote your games, and they're very, very expensive and time consuming to actually get it out. Nowadays, it's you know, you can do it at your fingertips, and it's really cool how you can use a lot of these platforms, which have these vibrant communities, um, you know, uh, to really let people know what you're doing and give them sneak previews and get some really good engagement. Yeah, yeah. And I think human beings in general are, evol are evolving to be able to consume more content than ever before. And it's kind of just our, our brains can handle so much. And it's it's remarkable, isn't it? How how deep we can go into the rabbit hole and experience all these things. And that's without Elon Musk's microchips, right? <laughs> <laughs> so soon to come. Like uh, We're waiting for <laughs> <laughs> that, that latest edition, like, yeah, Elon hit us up, let us know. Okay, we have somebody requesting. Ah, okay, it's 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 sushi sui swap again. Um, okay, well, yeah, um, there we go. Um, do you have a question for us? Uh, fault 007. Hello, hey, hello. How's it going? Uh, sir, when will we launch uh, the ABD Williams game, cricket game? We eagerly waiting oh, for that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think he's um, he's asking about the AB Developers game, which is a game that Maria is That's why working I on. saw that news, then only I will join Maria. <laughs> I am from <laughs> India. <laughs> My age 20. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. Um, and uh, great to have you over in, in the space. Um, so we did just have an AMA with um, AB uh, recently. Uh, he talked about how the production is great, going great and how much the game means to him from um, personal. Oh, I missed uh, that standpoint. AMA, right? I missed it. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, you know, there, there's a full recap of the AMA, and I think we've saved the recording somewhere for you to catch up on it. Um, basically, they that's where the latest updates are going, and kind of the trajectory of the game development. And uh, yeah, he's, he's talking to fans as well. So uh, I do recommend you check that one out for the latest. And um, we'll be announcing when the game will be out. So sit yes. tight. I know but the, is project, very pop the team Maria uh, is amazing potential but no one do not know about media well you know we're focused more on uh, just making great games in the uh, marketing is uh, we need to increase marketing Digital yeah 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 sure sure um well do you know do do feel free to tell your friends um about us if you yes, feel like I will more find many people in Discord. <laughs> Thank well, you, yeah, thank, thank you. you so and much. I, for that. I would just, I would just add as well, and I think you know, um, you may, you make a really good point around you know marketing, and you know it's important for us to understand that great products don't just appear like that, right? There's a lot of hard work that happens behind the scenes, and you know we we want to make sure we create really cool games. We want to make sure that it meets people's expectations. And then we push it out, right? And people can actually enjoy it. And believe it or not, the best form of marketing is the users themselves, the gamers themselves, who actually have a great experience and they tell their friends and families about this cool game. And it just spreads word of mouth. You get the, yes, the network yes, effect. Yes, yes, That's and, why uh, I will yeah. join. I oh, love thank it. you, thank you. I love yeah, the community means... also. In Discord, uh, they uh, love Amazing. people, all people I love. 
Yeah, no, that's amazing. And, you know, I, I too am excited for the, the cricket game. We love cricket here in England too. And this is this is what I've been trying to say in this whole AMA, right? Which is the, bringing Web2 gaming and communities into Web3. And if you look at a lot of, you know, sports, whether it's soccer or cricket or rugby, uh, you've got a lot of these really cool communities supporting some of these personalities and these uh, really awesome sportsmen or, or, or teams. Um, and actually, if we could then go into those areas and say, hey, you can actually create your own virtual experience, your own game, your own kind of collectibles, uh, digital collectibles with Web3 technologies and actually empower and incentivize and allow your own community to monetize this. I mean, that's just transformative, right? Um, so it's great to see Mira doing this with the cricket. Um, and I think, you know, you'll see more of this in the future uh, across other, other games as well. But um, but no, good point about the marketing, and I think network effects is uh, is king. Really, we need to just from the grassroots spread the message, let people know the cool, awesome games we have, uh, and that's more powerful than any you know <laughs> marketing huh? budget to get this sort of artificial marketing. So uh, yes, no, thanks for the <laughs> and we waiting for Meta right also, sir. Okay, yes. great. <laughs> good to see a fan over there, and uh, you know if if you're looking for. Pretty cool NFT experiences. Also, do check out Go Nifty and what they're doing over there. Yes, I am studying only college. <laughs> I apply for role, but no results uh, coming, sir. I apply for <laughs> role in Maria. They do not replay also the team. Why? Is this uh, the ambassador role, or which one are you applying for? I'm sure the inboxes are kind of chock full as well at the moment. So I apply for <laughs> marketing role. To develop more and more, they do not require. Right. But uh, well, I wait for that. <laughs> well, I'm so. sure they're going through uh, a bunch of applications right now. So thank you for applying as well. Thank you, thank you. Alrighty, cool. Thanks, thanks for joining. Um, I'll catch you later, Fault. I'm gonna bump you down now. Alrighty. Um, and so <clears throat> just conscious of time, we've got five minutes left. And if there are no more questions, um, is there anything else um, you, you'd you like to mention, Yasin, before we kind of drop off and uh, have the rest of our days? Yeah, I'd just like to say thanks so much uh, for hosting me today. Uh, I had a great chat with you. It's really amazing to speak about what we're doing, the border industry, and also the cool solutions of Miria. Big shout out to our community as well, who's been supporting us from the early days. And, you know, we've very much been put on our heads down, just focusing on building. We haven't, we too haven't, haven't um, been sort of focusing a lot on the marketing side, but once we've got the games, that will all change. Um, yeah. And for anyone that wants to learn more about what we're doing, please head over to our website, check out our site, our socials. You can find the links there. Uh, and the clips to our games and we're really looking forward to launching the avatar drop especially which will be next week so please keep your eyes peeled for that and um you know you know seize seize the opportunity to <laughs> get a piece uh, get a footing in our metaverse with one of these uh genesis avatars absolutely okay. i mean i want to be a founding f uh, member of your uh community and uh of your metaverse too so it's a very um exciting drop that's happening soon and of course it's been such a pleasure to have you over really and thank you so much for all the insightful points that you've given us today um and to everybody who's listening in if you have a friend who you think would be interested in this talk this recording will be available in the internet forever if you guys want to just hop on back and listen in on some of the interesting things that we've been uh, discussing over the past hour. So yeah, thanks again so much, Yasin, for, for joining us today. And I thank everybody for listening in. Thank you. Pleasure's all mine. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> really appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. And you guys have a good day. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.